All right, folks. I think it's time to talk about uh, <clears throat> a new subject matter here that I haven't really had to talk about before because there's been no need. And um, I'm going to get ready to take my 1938 Plymouth on a, a reasonably expectable, respectable road trip. Now, it's taken me about a year to get to the point where I'm confident and I want to drive this car long distance. So I spent all last winter, summer and winter going over the car and then I insured it for the first time April 1st or so and now today it's the uh, September the 4th and it's taken me some till now to put a thousand miles on the car and um, it's been good. I think I ironed out all the everything. I, it's taken me this while to feel confidence in the car. A thousand miles now this year and you know, this series of car, 1938, I, I don't know about earlier cars. 35 is probably okay. I, it's, it's, I, I know I've been in a 1928, and it's it's definitely kind of inadequate for my purposes. Now, other people have taken these old 20s cars and early 30 cars on road trips. You know, your, your maximum speed is in that 40, 45 mile an hour range in those cars. I've been in the 1928 and it gets scary at um, 35 miles an hour. There's not much left at 35 miles an hour. So personally for me, you know, those kind of cars have their place. But a long highway trip, you know, I respect people that can do that in a car that old at those speeds. Now today on the highway, I mean, cars are ripping fast. It's easy to be seeing 70, 80 miles an hour on divided multi-lane highways. And this car behind me here, my 1938, it's pretty comfortable at um, 50 miles an hour. feels good. So I feel pretty good at 50 miles an hour keeping up with traffic for the most part. I can get out of their way. I, I just I want to be prepared. I see cars, and especially semi-trucks, that are slow on the hills. You know, they get rear-ended by distracted drivers people aren't paying attention and the hammer into the back of a semi at uh, you know the semi's doing 25 30 miles an hour up a big hill and they're doing 70 miles an hour I've seen a lot of that carnage on the highways I don't want to be that so I've decided I'm gonna prepare my car for a trip I'm gonna do about probably between four and five hundred miles round trip and I'll take you through some of the things that I'm gonna do to give me the peace of mind uh, to be able to go on a trip like that. I'm going to be by myself. And I'm, I'm going to have a quiet drive down an old highway. It used to be the main highway across Canada. It's called the Trans-Canada Highway. Then we built a new highway that's faster and better. And uh, the old highway, the business has dried up. Um, there's a lot of history on the old highway. It was built in probably the 30s, 40s. And then by the mid 80s, it was done and all the businesses shut down. So we'll go on a bit of a tour through that. I'll talk you through some history. And I'll talk about some of the things that uh, I'm going to do here to my car. You know, just do a quick walk around. I'm going to set the headlights better. Um, you never know. You know, you could get maybe delayed or broke down for a little while on the side of the highway. And then all of a sudden you're driving in the dark and you weren't planning to. And I want to make sure my headlights are adjusted. My fog lights, they're working well. I don't plan to use them but they're great on super dark highways. They give me just a little bit more light. So I'm, those work well, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put rain -X on my windshield. My wiper on the driver's side work. The passenger side doesn't work. I'm not really worried about it. The rain -X is gonna help and uh, keep that window clear. I've already been through the cooling system. We talked about that in an earlier video. Um, everything, uh, the safety features on the car are all there. I'm really happy with the brakes. I feel good about the brakes. I feel good about the engine, everything, everything's good mechanically. But just for a, a little bit of peace of mind, I decided to throw in a bottle of this. Now this is questionable, not that it has any added benefit. But it does say that on the back, somewhere this STP oil treatment, it says that it contains ZDDP zinc additive. And... I, it's negligible how much zinc's actually in there, but it's not going to hurt, right? 
I'm going to be going 50 miles an hour for three to four hours. It's, uh, it's not going to hurt to have my camshaft and my tappets a little bit better lubricated, maybe. What the hell? I'm going to try it. Uh, oil is good. I've only got 1,000 miles on the oil, so I'm not going to change it. Cooling system's been done. The electrical system I feel really confident in. One of the things that I haven't really worried about up to this point is, is something that I think it's time to deal with because I'm going to be going down the highway. And I've got to prepare for almost anything. And um, one of those things is the, um, the defroster, the heater. Now, the heater works. i got to work. It used to have a three-way switch for low, medium, high fan speeds. That was done. It was baked and rusted and corroded. I threw it out. And I put just an on-off switch. So I got high fan or off. And in order to regulate the temperature, I either turn the fan off or I open up my handy temperature regulator right here on the hood. Open or close that in cool weather, it's going to adjust the temperature in the cab. It allows cool air in the cab. But down the front of my windshield here in this area, there's little slits in the dash. And I want to make sure I have warm air that I can direct up to the windows in the event that I get stuck in a rainstorm, maybe a cool evening or morning and it's raining. You never know what can happen, right? You get into a up on a mountain pass or something, maybe in a temperature drops and all of a sudden you got your windows fogging up. So I've, the only thing I really need to do is buy new hose because I, I had uh, everything is in place. I just need new hose. The old hose, it's original and it's crusty. So... I took a chunk of the old hose with me to the auto parts store locally, and um, they sold me this. It's called Gates, part number 23828. It's inch and three quarter by six feet long. That's exactly what I pulled out of there, inch and three quarters. This is my diffuser that comes out of my heater here, and the hose is going to redirect, and there's little vents on the top of the windows. Don't know if you can see them or not. Down in here, little vents. So when I get down in my heater, I'm going to turn on the heater and I'm going to blow that warm air up on the window to defrost it. I'm going to do that. I think that's important. Got a window wiper, I got a defrost heater. I think, I think that's it. Fire extinguisher, extra gas. <laughs> I'll walk through everything as I go here about what I'm doing. I will not have a radio. I don't have a radio in my car and I don't really miss that. But maybe on a four or five hundred mile trip, I'm going to... It might, might miss the radio, but you know what? I'm just going to drive and think about maybe driving in 1938 and what that road would have been like and just pick up all the sights and the sounds and the smells and see if I can make an interesting video for you folks based on that. So that's a start. As I uh, get more into different things I'm going to do to prepare my car for the trip. All right, check it out. We got heater defrost hoses off the heater so a little bit of heat comes out through this plenum here it splits off goes to each vent and up on the bottom we got another little vent there you get some heat out of the passenger side and then I guess the idea is to keep the whole cab warm of course but you know what my wife's always cold it doesn't matter if it's fucking 100 degrees outside she doesn't mind the heat on it seems so uh this is my switch here for the heater I will listen Yes, I can feel it. It's not like <laughs> modern heat, but of course not. It's 1938. It's damn good for 1938. Um, you know what's important for a road trip? It's fuses, in my opinion. You know, I added that little fuse panel there. And um, it's going to give you a little bit, again, more security traveling down the road that something's not going to catch on fire. I like it when I learn a lesson. And I can teach others. So let's have a look, and I'll teach you a little bit about the lesson I learned. Down here's my battery. And you can see my hoses. I've wrapped them in heater hose. Any vibrating, any vibrations, anything like that, it's gonna, anywhere there's potential for it to rub, the rub on the frame here. I've got hose protecting it. Now, when I first put the battery cable on there, I didn't have this part wrapped here. And you can see that's not a good fit. I'm running double lot cables. They're big and they're heavy. They're, they're kind of cumbersome to work with. And I went back and I double checked my work and I found that that battery cable 
Here's more heater hose here. Was rubbing on the battery box there. And I know that's not stock. I'll get it figured out. Just be careful with your electrical. I can't stress that enough. You can't have wires, especially off the battery, shorting out. Not while you're driving. Not anytime. Big fire. You get it glowing real good. You're going to smell it. You're going to pull over. And if you don't have a fire extinguisher, man, you could burn to the ground pretty quick. Now, this is kind of a safety hazard, I guess. It's rolling around the back seat. I guess I should mount it somehow. If I have an accident, it could really come over and hit me in the head. Kill me. Um, this is a big one. I don't know how what size that is compared to my hands, but good size. That's probably going to be able to put out a fire in this car. That's coming with me when I go on my road trip for sure. You know, it's, it's kind of funny what, it, what excites some of us old car guys. I'm excited that I'm going to have heat on, on defrost. <laughs> Anyways, we love our old cars and getting every little piece just a little bit better is exciting. Um, I dug out my shirt today. Special shirt for the video. It says Torque on there. <laughs> and I picked this up at a swap meet or something. Torque. That's what these old cars are all about. You know, they're not big on horsepower. They make more torque. They have a long stroke engine, flathead. And this car um, has enough torque to pull the hills on the highway. Any hill that I've been on, I can maintain 50 miles an hour on the highway. Thanks to my friend, Mr. Torque. All right, so stay tuned, check back. Uh, this will be part one of the series, I guess. I'll call this a mini series. <laughs> a special mini series on, on my car and its upcoming adventure. Preparing the car, yeah, I'll call this part one. And then uh, check back, there'll be more videos coming.